All right, everybody, time for the final stretch, the last part of the fire cards. So first we have Zuberi, Outlands Warlord. This card's actually pretty interesting for Constructed. First off, we get a 3, 5, or 4, so that's not bad. Then if he attacks, the top unit of your deck gets attack equal to Zuberi's attack. So it's basically at least plus 3, plus 0 if Zuberi has Warcry or weapons on him or any kind of buff, even like combat tricks for the turn before you attack, um, then the unit on top of your deck gets significantly bigger. So it's basically Warcry equal to his attack just on attack. So it's similarly good to Warcry, although not uh, buffing the health definitely matters, but we get a lot of attack for that. And on Inspire, units you draw get double damage, which is also really powerful, especially combined with his ability. So basically, most units you draw will be at least three attack bigger and then deal twice the damage they usually do. So it's a massive buff. But Inspire on a four drop also comes with the downside that you have less draw steps before the game ends to actually draw units that matter than you would have with like a two drop, for example. But yeah card definitely has potential. Not sure in what deck for now, because there's no deck that obviously comes to mind that uh, wants this kind of card, but it's definitely a solid fire four drop to keep in mind. And in limited, this is a pretty good card too, for sure. Maybe even better than in constructed. Next we have Fiery Fissure, unplayable in constructed, not great in limited, but still mediocre removal is still better than no removal in limited, so in limited it's still okay. Um, the tribute overwhelm is both not that easy to enable and also not very useful. Like, I mean, you need to shoot a, a really small unit for the overwhelm to do something, basically like a two health unit, and then all you get is a five cost uh, piercing shot, punishing shot deal 2 to the unit and 2 to the player, so yeah, pretty underwhelming, even limited, but an okay filler removal, I guess. Next we have Grave Marker Oni. In Constructed, this is pretty unplayable. In Limited, this is not great, but potentially an okay filler. You get a 5 power 4-2, which is a pretty bad deal, but if you manage to set up the tribute, you get to draw a weapon of your choice from your deck, so you get a 2 to on top. So yeah, with Tribute it's decent and limited, without the Tribute it's terrible. So you better have good ways to enable Tribute and one or two good uh, two-dot targets for the Tribute ability to make this worth it in limited usually. Next we have Robo Buddy. That's adorably cute and a cool name, but a fairly bad card once again. Not to say awful, we get a 5 cost 1-6 charge with Infiltrate you create and draw a helpful doorbot. Like, this card is mind-bogglingly terrible, but once again redeemed by its adorable, awesome artwork, basically. So yeah, don't put this in your decks in Limited or Constructed, really. In Limited, maybe you sometimes want a 5 cost 1-6 with minor upside, but rarely. Next we have Wildfire Sensari. It's a 5 cost 5-3, five, double fire, when you play a spell, uh, Wildfire Sensari gets plus 1, plus 1 in quick draw this turn. Definitely way too underpowered and expensive for constructed, but in limited this is actually pretty decent. Attacking with a 6-4 quick draw on turn 6 with your 5 drop is a pretty good deal. This seems like a pretty solid fire 5 drop in limited, maybe even more than solid, because this card looks like it can be really obnoxious if you can trigger it a couple times. Similar to the 5 power 5-2 that uh, becomes invulnerable to damage with Empower, basically. Like, similarly good. Next we have Birthright. At the start of each player's turn, they play the top card of the deck. Yeah, that card seems pretty terrible. It's really slow and expensive. It's symmetrical and uncontrollable, really bad card in limited or constructed. 800 dust for you. Next we have Dashing Rapscallion, 6 power 5-5 five, five with Berserk, 
and when she attacks she gets plus two attack. In constructed, overcasted and underpowered, but in limited this is pretty good. Basically you get to attack for seven and then for nine if you berserk. So you can deal 16 in one turn with this if it goes unblocked. That's pretty powerful. And a 6 power 5-5 five, five with upside, or like virtually 7-5 on offense, is decent and limited. Not great, but uh, one of the better 6 drops to put in a limited deck, I guess, outside of like truly powerful 6 drops. Next we have End of the Barrel. So effectively we just get 8 power for 6 power. If we're lucky we can warp it and very rarely we can even tribute it to ramp up to 10 but there's not even much to do with 10 so mostly this is just plus 2 power for 0 to 1 card. Not very exciting I think. Maybe there's something that you can try and do to break this and ramp out powerful stuff but I am not sold yet. And in limited, this is basically unplayable. Next we have Pyre Elemental. This card's actually really cool, I really like it. If you play a spell, this is basically a 2 power for 3 charge, which is a really good deal. The problem is getting enough cheap spells, preferably a 0 and 1 cost spells, to get this going. Maybe you can combine it with the 1 cost spell from earlier that um, makes the 2 3 1 relentless uh, units. And then like Torch and maybe like Suffocate and stuff like that or Finest Hour. We'll see. There might be like a cool hyper aggressive explosive deck with uh, this card because the card itself is really nice. You just need to find the right uh, setup for it. And then Limited, this is a bit harder to make work so less appealing there. Next we have Core Scavenger, 7 power 5 for Sentinel. On summon you give one of your units plus two plus one while you have core scavenger. Definitely not a constructed card, but a pretty solid limited seven drop I would say. But not great. Effectively you get seven six in stats or seven power uh, spread over two cards. But giving the buff to a flyer or to a particularly good unit that then makes it beat everything in combat uh, can be better than just having a random seven cost fatty. So it's an okay uh, curve top filler for limited decks potentially, but that's about it. Next we have Final Shot. 7 power plus 5 plus 1 and Greek draw. That's a pretty expensive and uh, forward statted card with a lot of attack and little health, but the Quick Draw makes up for it. Um, spellcraft. You get to play a gun down. This is clearly not a constructed card, but in limited. This is pretty good for an 8 drop, basically turning one of your units into a monster and killing a good unit of the opponent seems like a good deal. So, not the biggest fan of 8 cost cards in limited, but this is definitely a really great 8 drop if you're looking for a 7 to 8 drop. And the flexibility of being playable when you're not hitting that 8's power is definitely a nice bonus too. And last but not least, we have First Flame. The coolest reanimation target in the game so far, I would say. 11 cost, 8-8. Eight, eight. When you or one of your units hit the enemy player, play a 3-1 Flame Fang with Reckless. The 3-1 that we saw earlier. On summon you play a 5-5 five, five Infernus. So the Infernus will usually create a 3-1 Flame Fang, the turn you play first Flame. And if you manage to uh, get this into play with Tribute. Instead you get 3 Infernus, so up to 3 uh, three one Flame Fangs and up to 15 damage to the enemy player. This is a really brutal reanimation target that uh, sets you up really well. So if you're looking to reanimate stuff, this is your guy. Other than that, card's not very playable. 11 is just way too much in any format. Don't put this in your draft decks, kids. 11 power is just not realistic it will mostly just lose you games. And the one game where you actually get to 11 and don't lose yet and get a flashy win with this will not make up for it. Alright, that's it for the fire cards in the Fall of Argent board. I will continue the set review um, in the order we see at the bottom here. So, next is time in the next couple days. Not sure when I manage it, 
maybe tomorrow or on Sunday probably. And yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think about the fire cards and about my assessments and opinions of those and where you might disagree and why. And let's have a nice discussion about the new set. I so far quite like the set. I mean, there's always a bunch of awful crap in these sets, but there's also a lot of really cool and interesting cards. So I'm excited to start brewing, brewing again and tuning old decks with the new cards. So that's it again for today. That was the first uh, Fall of Argentport set review for the fire cards. And I'm Manuel. I thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye.